grateful to be invited here and to give this short presentation. Um, I've become increasingly inspired by the effect of music on those who make it, on those who listen it, and more indirectly, on the society <coughs> and the environment we live in. Autonomy of art and freedom of artistic expression are central values of the modernized art as part of the modernized society. However, they are too often used as easy escape doors when ethical justification of somebody's actions are questioned. Along my reservations towards modernism, I believe that music or any other art should not remain in isolation and in order to fight the toxic power structures in the scene of music, we have to consider into which extent the music itself is part of the problem. This leads to me to ask if a more collegial attitude towards compositional practices might lead to a more sustainable, uh, more sustainable ethics in music making at large. And as a, subtone, as a subtone, how could inter or transdisciplinary practices contribute in the search? My main instrument is bassoon, and early on I realized that I was not happy uh, with the industrial single-mindedness that the carrier of uh, mainstream bassoonist would have uh, would have required. But luckily, I became a composer, someone in position uh, to do something about it. And since I'm uh, unhappy with the music. Uh, that treats musicians like slaves or machines, I can compose something completely different in its essence. <coughs> well. was not actually composed music, uh, but instead it was uh, collectively improvised, uh, collectively improvised um, music, uh, let's say concept improvised music, uh, by an ensemble that I and my colleagues uh, formed a couple of years ago. And this was from our performance in, in Time of Music Festival, Vita Finland, in 2014. Actually, uh, on the same week, many of us participated in Sunday Bhagavati's compromisation course. That was actually very influential to many of my thoughts afterwards. And uh, the piece uh, we, re uh, we, we heard, uh, or part of, uh, was uh, kind of based on bubbly properties of sparkling wine <coughs> as a concept. Uh, yeah, and in this ensemble, Korvatauki ensemble, we have participated in uh, some interdisciplinary uh, projects, let's say with stage poets, visual artists, dancers, and contact improvisers. And uh, so, um, my experience on collective improvisation uh, has given me back, actually, my identity of bassoonist I once lost. And uh, it has also restored my faith in future of a more holistic musicianship. So, uh, inspired by the stern, uh, I've ex explored in my recent uh, projects uh, how could I as composer relinquish my position as a dictator and instead of that invite others, be they performing musicians, uh, artists of other disciplines, 
members of audience or other human beings to the round table. In almost every work uh, I've composed in past three years, uh, I've either navigated between the arts or experimented on democratization of the form, or both. Uh, from being the very th uh, thing that the classically trained composers usually are least willing to compromise or negotiate, I think the, the form is central thing to, to, to uh, question. And I will next discuss three works that demonstrate uh, three distinct combinations of approaches. And I'm not saying these works are masterpieces that demonstrate all the uh, answers to these questions. Rather, they are just my little scratches on the subject. Uh, so, uh, Parti Pré Quotidien is, is my first take on uh, multimedia theatre. Uh, Massa Humu is a collectively composed work uh, for a choir and orchestra employing tape and video. And Suon Ani is a gallery installation project. Uh, where I'm involved uh, with my uh, visual artist friend Hanna Rintamäntu. So, uh, yeah, first about Berti Quotidien. We didn't actually use that picture in the piece, but it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, it's my second most uh, recent premiere and appears may here mainly as a don't do as I do example. Uh, it, we, it was, uh, well, okay, this is maybe, you could do this, but uh, it was in, inspired by the question of how our daily life affects us. And it was premiered last month in Helsinki uh, by Cologne-based uh, uh, ensemble of transmedia music called Ensemble Garage, led by Brigitta Untadov. And, uh, well, this piece was my dedicate uh, do it your do it all yourself experiment. Uh, besides composing the music, including a soundtrack and a max patch with a sample library from uh, real life sounds, uh, I directed the stage action, made a slouch show for the pro pro to be projected as, as a staging, and uh, I was one of the two producers of the concert and nearly ended up doing the lights too. And while this approach could have worked, uh, if I had more experience, it proved very risky when I did too many things for the very first time. And uh, in this moment I want to show you a video that shows exactly the moment when everything started going wrong. Oh, wait, there is no sound. Uh, oh yeah, because, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, the audience comments I received confirmed uh, my first impression that although everything kind of uh, went apart and came up, came to get, we came to the together to the end initially, it still worked really well actually. The the eth ethos of the work came through, and I think uh, this taught me at least two things. Uh, first, uh, I should start with building a team of experts rather than trying to do everything myself. And um, second, I should invest more uh, time, more time uh, in uh, finding a notation that would straight away communicate to the performers that kind of approach they had to put on when there was the moment where everybody was in a different place. Because then they started improvising, then they started interacting. And I, I was actually very thrilled of the moment. And uh, maybe I should uh, 
next focus on a notation that would kind of invite them to do it all like from the very beginning and, and not in the moment where they can't just anymore follow each other in a chamber music way. So, yeah, we came, uh, we came together even if my little finger was wrong in that situation. Okay, uh, yeah, why is there these dots? There should be dots. Uh, one week from now, I will be back in Finland on a misty swamp, improvi improvising with bassoon, cameras and microphones shooting. This session uh, will create material for a music video that will be part of an installation of uh, uh, visual artist Hanna Rintamendu. And b besides video, she will do painting and sculpture. And this work in pro process, Suwan Ani, or the voice of the swamp, is our second collaboration and, and this time we try to articulate our anxiety on climate change and the deterioration of natural environment and the decline of humanity along it. Uh, our aim is to invite the audience uh, to sensorily pleasant room uh, where one's licensed, uh, licensed to meet their own <coughs> concerns and own emotions. And. Uh, Han has invited me to participate uh, in the deciding uh, the ethos of the work. And um, yes, I have to say that this, this, our collaboration has been really nice. Mm, no, but my collaboration with this uh, presentation seems not to be a very nice. Uh, there should come some audio, but Apparently it's not. Maybe it was destroyed. Well, whatever. Uh, yeah. So what I was about to say. Uh, yeah. Thus, although my practical chores after the recording sessions are limited to sound editing and uh, some say on the video edit, I feel that this is truly my project too, and I'm looking forward to implementing the same kind of peer-to-peer -peer attitude in future <coughs> projects of my own ini initiation, too. Okay, then how about relinquishing composers' omnipotence by sharing it with other composers, making it by making it vulnerable uh, to critique as the work goes on. So uh, my recent experience of uh, collective compositorship is actually very promising to this sense. On New Year's Day, I got a phone call that gave me a long-awaited uh, opportunity to experiment uh, collectively with the orchestra, mm. which I think is the most illustrative example of what needs shaping in the so-called classical music. Uh, let's say a rigidness, focus on canonized repertoire, of a military <coughs> obedience to conductors at tone. So uh, I and uh, Touko Niemi, Joel Järventaus, Tamatiko Seppalen and Lauri Supponen were commissioned by the Helsinki Festival a short uh, uh, disruptive overture for choir and orchestra to be premiered in Esa-Pekka Salonen's 60th year anniversary gala next to August in Helsinki. And we didn't go the easy way out, like just putting together separate sections, <coughs> but instead we decided together on the big picture and while we had to divide the sketching work, of course, uh, then uh, every had it, everybody had their say on every section and all important aesthetic problems were <coughs> taken through discussion. And uh, we went even further in yielding artistic ownership. Uh, the conductor, Salonen himself, in the premiere will be, uh, decides the recombination of certain brass passages in the work and we're after finally entering the stage after eight minutes of the ten minutes of the piece and because of the music musicians play and sing most of the time uh, without conductors uh, beat the work work questions the central position of the conductor and moreover the audience may take part in making the lyrics of the piece by greeting Solomon in Twitter I hope you all <laughs> uh, can participate in that and uh, Yes, as much as I love formal thinking, well, whatever, uh, uh, I cannot help considering it false to claim uh, it's solely a comp composer's domain. And while, let's say, like Cajun, randomness, uh, aleatory composition, 
uh, offered a well-deserved antithesis to formalist status quo of the last century, they still lack, uh, to me, what is vital, the agency of the musician, a fully entitled human being in the performance. And our bad habits are often shadowed by, the, uh, by them being shared among our peers. And one of the key benefits of our interdisciplinary work or any collaboration with peers not sharing your training, experience or mindset is that your habits get exposed. And well, this is why I think practices entre art and shared artistic decision making processes are good paths toward art that serves humanity by letting us confront ourselves as social species. species. And common good can be found through negotiation and compromise. And common good is something I think also the music should care about.